All right, so this objective is about money. It's about interest, specifically computing compound interest. And uh, whenever you make some sort of investment, you get some interest, you're, you're making your money grow, which is, well, pretty much what the picture is all about there. Okay, wouldn't it be nice if you could actually do that, growing the money on the tree? And your parents always say, oh, money never grows on trees. But look, it's right there in this picture. There's evidence. Okay, anyway. So, interest. What the heck is that anyway? Anytime you go to stash your money in some sort of bank, a financial institute, they're going to pay you for uh, getting to use your money. So they're not just, like you put $1,000 into the bank. That $1,000 does not actually stay in the bank. Usually they're going to invest it, they're going to let other people borrow it, and they're going to pay you for that. And what they pay you, a very, very small amount, is called your interest, okay? So usually this interest rate, whenever you, it's just like a bank account, it's, it's definitely less than 5%, probably even less than 3 maybe even a single percent. It's very, very tiny, very, very tiny. Okay, so also when you borrow money, let's say you gotta buy yourself a car, maybe you're doing some student loans or whatever, Whenever you borrow money, you have to basically pay them to let you use their money. And that's also called interest. And the interest rate for you to borrow money is way, way higher than for you to let them use your money. Huh? That's the way the world works. That's where banking works. Okay, so when you go to buy your first car, you'll probably have a percentage rate, maybe 10, 15%, something like that, when you're first starting out. Anyway, um, so that's way bigger than you just putting your money in their bank. Okay, so interest comes in two kinds. First kind is simple interest. It's very, very simple. Your interest is only computed on your principal. The word principal means the initial amount, the original amount that you started with. Okay, and this is the kind of interest that you learn to compute in like sixth grade, and it's very unrealistic. Like nobody really uses simple interest. They use the second kind, compound. So why did you do it? Because they probably just needed to keep you busy, give you some multiplication problems, keep you out of trouble. Anyway, so compound interest, which is more realistic, this is where your interest, after it's been calculated, is added back to the principal in order to compute the interest again. So interest is calculated on the principal plus any interest that has been earned in the past. So that makes your amount bigger. So a thousand dollars, I take say five percent of that, whatever I get, I add it back to my thousand dollars. So the next time I compute my interest, it's not on the five thousand or the one thousand anymore, it's on the slightly bigger amount. Okay? And that's the type of interest that we usually do. Compound interest. Here's the formula for it. It has a nice formula. And this formula looks a lot like the exponential growth equation that we saw in the last, uh, the last objective, because essentially that's what it is. But you're breaking your rate up over a certain number of times per year. Those are called compoundings, I, the number of times that I compound this. So in this equation, a, e, a is the amount that's in your account, P is your principal, the amount that you start with, and your R, 1 plus R over N, R is the percentage rate. It's a, it's, it is given to you as a percent, but you, of course, would write it as a decimal number. N is the number of times that you compound it. And so banks usually compound it. They could compound it once a year. They could compound it twice a year, maybe four times a year if it's quarterly, every month, every day, something like that, or even, look down at the bottom, continuously. So this is like an exponential growth equation because 1 plus r over n is going to be a number that's bigger than 1. And so uh, it'll be just like the equations that we looked at before with exponential growth. Okay, so let's say that you deposit $5,500 in an account that pays that 3.6% uh, annual interest and we want to find the balance after 10 years if it's compounded this many times. So what I'm going to do is just write down the formula with an n value, or an n variable in the place of the number of times it's compounded. So I'm going to start off with amount equals 5,500 
times, and then I knew the, I need the parentheses this time. So, one plus point zero three six. That is the percentage rate over uh, in. I don't know how many times compounded just yet. I'm gonna have four different values for number one, two, three, and four here, and uh, this raised to the n t power. So t is ten. So this is ten in. So now I'm just going to call up my calculator and put this in with different in values. So in on semi-annually, just like at Victoria's Secret, which happens twice a year, in is equal to two. Quarterly, in is equal to four times a year. Monthly, in is equal to 12. And daily, I think there's 360 days in a year, right? 360, if you're Babylonian, 365 days. Okay, so uh, pull up the calculator and on, on, clear. Okay, so uh, just type it in like you see it, 5,500. Look at that, updates ready, install, nice. It comes across like two or three times a day. One plus my percentage rate, 0.036% divided by... Uh, the first one is 2, so divided by, didn't get the division sign, divided by 2, close the parentheses, and now raise it to 10 times 2, times the n value. If you have the older operating system on your calculator, you'll probably have to put your, uh, put your exponent in a set of parentheses. Otherwise, it would just raise it to the 10th power and then times your whole thing, your whole answer by 2. And that would be, that'd be bad. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and we're at $7,858, and round that off to 11 cents. Now, I'm not going to write that down every single time, so there it is right there on the screen. So let's try this again, this time with our n value being 4. So rather than typing it in again, let's just go second enter. No, not second answer. Second enter. There we go. And then change the 2s to 4s. So let's just scroll over here and type over that, make it a 4, make that one a 4, $7,870.63 when I round it. Notice that it went up. Hmm, interesting. So it's gone up a little bit. The, if I increase it, like I, two more times of compounding the interest, I get more money. That's interesting. Uh, anyway, so monthly. Let's call this thing up again. <laughs> second enter, second enter, and then change the four to a twelve. So right here, that one's easy. The exponent. This one, gotta be careful. So whenever I go to type in the twelve, it's gonna start typing over the parentheses. So you have to insert second insert. Now put the two. Seven thousand eight hundred seventy-nine dollars and six cents. So it still went up some. Hmm, that's also interesting. Do you think it's gonna like continue to go up? Let's see what it's gonna be for. Three hundred and sixty-five. So it's done daily. So let's enter this in again. Second enter. Type 365 over this, and then change the 12 also to a 365, have to insert that 5. $7,883.17, so it still went up. My question again is, is it going to keep going up? Is this going to reach like, uh, let's say $8,000? How about $10,000? That's a good question, a fair question. So um, uh, to answer that question, we're going to simplify our values. Let's say we deposit $1,000 in a bank account that pays 5% annual interest, and we're going to find the balance in the account after 10 years if we compound it daily, hourly, or by the minute. And uh, let's see what happens, right? As, as you increase the number of compoundings, we see that the value in the account gets bigger and bigger. Is it going to get bigger without bound? Is it going to get to, um, like, any dollar amount? All right, so uh, here's the equation written out. Just uh, 1,000, would you agree? 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05, that's the rate, divided by n. So I'm going to have three different compounding rates raised to the 10 n power. So on the daily rate, n value, of course, is going to be 365. Plug that in there, and I get $1,648.66. Okay, so that's if it's compounded daily. Compounded hourly, I got my 365 days. And each one of those has 24 hours in it, so just multiply that out. 365 times 24, it is 8,760 compoundings. That's a lot. 
So whenever you plug that into the formula, it's got to be it's got to be like two thousand dollars or something, right? It's got to be. Let's see, what is it? It's one thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. What? It went up like six cents. That's it. Hmm. That's that's weird. Okay. Let's look at by the minute, minutely. So uh, in each one of those. 8,760 hours, there's 60 minutes, so you multiply those things out, and we're compounding it 525,600 times. Whew! Now this one's got to be over $2,000, right? I mean, look how many times we're compounding it, and we get the exact same number. It didn't go up a single penny. We've done it um, over 500,000 more times, and it didn't go up a cent. Why is that? That's weird. Let's take a look at the graph, okay? So I've just graphed this as an equation where n is basically equal to x there. So across the bottom, the number of compoundings, uh, the amount is over there on the left-hand side. So here's the graph of that thing. See how it levels out right there? It's getting closer and closer to some number, but it never ever actually reaches it, or maybe it just it taps out at that number. And that, in mathematics, is called a limit. And once I've reached that limit, I'm, I'm not going past it. So this account could never go past that 1,600 and blah, blah, blah and change. Okay? And uh, so that answers the question. Is this thing going to increase without bound? No, it always reaches some sort of limit and never gets bigger than that. So uh, that has something to do with the next lesson. And that next lesson is about this peculiar number called E.